the false twin flame and the alien love bite. Love is a powerful and all-encompassing force. However, it has been distorted in the false matrix through processes of emotional manipulation and victim-victimizer programming. Many times this can manifest through a false twin flame, which is someone you are sure is your destined other half, who shares a part of your soul when they are actually a karmic relationship meant to help you do intensive karmic release and shadow work. Many times, false twin flames are used as a tool for extra dimensional beings to energy harvest through the use of etheric implants, emotional manipulation, and mind control. Eve Lorgan, author of the book, The Alien Love Bite, developed the term love bite as a situation where two abductees are programmed by their hyperdimensional controllers to essentially fall in love, quote unquote, with each other. In her book, Lorgan explores the effect of the love bite, which can range from simple breakups to violent divorces. In her follow-up book called The Dark Side of Cupid, Lorgan expresses the following. Rarely, if ever, is any attention placed on the supernatural within the context of human love relationships being orchestrated and interfered with. There are books about love relationships believed to be brought together by divine intervention, mystical tales of how Cupid's arrow magically brought together true soulmates, but it's generally within a positive framework of finding one's true love, soulmate, or twin flame. But what about love relationships that have the appearance of being a match made from heaven, but instead end disastrously as if a supernatural intelligence interlopes as Cupid? A counterfeit soulmate match. Could such a thing happen? The answer is yes, and this is what I call the dark side of Cupid, end quote. Love is more than an emotion. It is a frequency and a state of being. True love is the gateway to self-value in cultivating courageous and compassionate communities. The heart casts out an electromagnetic field, which can be referred to as the Taurus field. The Taurus field makes up our aura or energy body, and it causes energy to flow up and down and all around our bodies in the shape of a donut. When operating within its full potential, our Taurus field connects us to open source consciousness and subverts the closed system governed by the false matrix. The center of the Taurus field is the heart, which generates the largest electromagnetic field around the body. The heart is the focal point of all that is. The Taurus field creates a self-healing alchemical energy, which can act as a form of energetic protection from inverted systems which link to energy harvesting. It can be utilized as an energetic tool to shield and dispel any negative or unwanted energies and can help clear trapped, stuck, or stagnant energy from past hurts and traumas. Many mysteries still exist in our universe, one of which includes the role of the hyperdimensional presence on planet Earth. Hyperdimensional is defined as of or pertaining to a system having more dimensions than naturally found in our universe. Hyperdimensional beings are able to materialize in several dimensions at will and can do so without the presence of the body. Currently, it is not socially accepted in our society to acknowledge the presence of beings outside of the realm of our five senses of perception. As the amount of UFO sightings continue to increase and space exploration becomes more of a topic of interest for governments, this will continue to gradually change. The controllers of the false matrix know about the power of the heart and the creative power of our sexual energy centers as a human species. Unfortunately, although they may be educated in the power of love, they have failed or all out refused to embody it up until the time up until this time in human history due to their own wounding and disconnection from source this has caused them to resort to energetic vampirism in order to fuel their own energy harvesting campaigns 
Here are some of the reasons for orchestrating an alien love bite scenario, according to Bernard Gunther's article on alien love bites. Number one, genetic bloodline study or perpetuation of a particular trait useful for the aliens and our military intelligence or Illuminati related group. For example, high psychic and dissociative ability. Two, Emotional soul harvesting of energies siphoned off the abductee for aliens such as reptilians, dracos, or demonic powers accrued to human magicians. In cases where sexual manipulations are done, the sexual energy can be used in Montauk type experience for time travel or psychic amplifications or materializations. Three. Amplification of paranormal abilities such as telekinesis, telepathy, remote viewing, and precognition through sexual and soul bonding of other psychic abductees. In this case, you can call them my lab operatives. Some of these operatives may have monarch programming or the more sophisticated alien programming based on the fundamentals of monarch MK Ultra programming. Oftentimes, programmers who orchestrate the various missions for their highly trained operatives will want to soul bond and sexually bond a pair. This serves to keep the twinned operatives loyal to one another and increase their performance. For example, when two operatives are so bonded to one another, they can, telepath- they can telepathically transmit large amounts of information to one another sometimes during sexual activity. If they love one another, they will also die for one another, taking greater risks for the success of a dangerous mission. Number four, distraction and neutralization of troublesome abductees or researchers who are either breaking programming, whistleblowing, or getting too close to the truth. This may present itself as an abductee client that comes in to work with a researcher where a love affair ensues. Then the relationship can be an emotional roller coaster or create chaos in the researcher's life, distracting him or her from useful research. Or a sleeper operative abductee starts coming to a support group, wrecking chaos wherever they go, which may include a love bite set up with one of the members. It may result in dividing the support group creating unnecessary enmity between abductees and researchers who could have shared insightful experiences. In these instances, the setup serves to prevent useful information from reaching the public. Bernard Gunther defines analymous trauma as, quote, traumatic events that are out of the normal range of the human experience This can include alien abductions, near-death experiences, shamanic initiation, military abductions, mind control, spiritual warfare, cult involvement, and narcissistic abuse, end quote. One way that hyperdimensional beings have used energy harvesting as a way to control and manipulate the heart space is through the influencing of false twin flames through alien love bite scenarios. This has been used as a consciousness trap for awakening starseeds to divert them from their true mission on planet Earth to aid in planetary ascension by getting them caught up in dramas of heartache and duality and keeping them in cycles of trauma through painful and exhaustive soul contracts constructed to energy harvest and keep starseeds in pain traps and in feelings of low self-worth. Signs of a false twin flame one victim victimizer archetypes play out in the relationship two the relationship is ruled by patriarchal domination hive mind and an imbalanced connection with the masculine and feminine energies within and without three narcissistic personality disorder is highly present in the relationship four Feelings of entrapment or feeling bound to your romantic partner. 5. Feeling blocked from your life's purpose by the relationship. Ways to heal from the false twin flame. 1. Turn within to heal your inner feminine and masculine. 2. 
Practice polarity integration and embodying zero point energy. Three, cut cords of attachment in all of your chakras to the false twin flame. Four, practice forgiveness and compassion through practices such as Hiponopono. Five, cancel and revoke all soul contracts with the false twin flame. Six, Heal karma and clear Akashic records throughout all past life incarnations with this soul contract. 7. Remove all etheric implants and etheric weaponry related to this karmic bond. Many beings are tagged to magnetize, to magnetize false twin flame contracts towards them, especially through their reproductive organs. It is important to remove these tags because even if you break the karmic bond with one false twin flame, you can easily magnetize another one towards you if these false twin flame tags or forced breeding tags are still present within your energy field. One specific implant that many people will also need to have removed is an implant called the Zeta Seal located in the fourth dimensional realm of the heart chakra, which serves as a frequency fence, which currently blocks the heart chakra from fully opening and activating, making it incredibly difficult to express unconditional love, empathy, and compassion, even though the organic template of human beings is naturally designed for us to express these expansive characteristics. It is our right and responsibility as sovereign creator beings to fight for our right to reclaim our heart space. This is why sometimes love is war and war is love in the current third dimensional and even fourth dimensional paradigm. This won't always be the case as the collective consciousness continues to evolve, but universal love currently has a difficult time thriving in the current third and fourth dimensional paradigms that much of our society is currently residing in due to it being run off of closed and inverted systems of trauma and sacrifice. The false matrix is built upon a loveless system, so the more we collectively access our heart space, the less life force we feed to the false matrix. Love is the reason for the season. An open and clear heart is our golden ticket into a higher level of consciousness. In order to reach this level of coherence, we must collectively work on clearing the pain body, also known as the instinctual body located in the sacral chakra, which is known as our second chakra and creative center. In our organic state of consciousness, unimpaired by DNA suppression and etheric technology and trauma, we as a human population can be a powerful and creative force. However, until we clear the trauma located in the pain body, we will continue to be used as an energetic food source for the controllers of the false matrix in order to feed parasitic and inverted systems. Unhealed trauma shrinks our torus field and creates rips and tears in our auric field as well as energy blockages and leakages. The best way to keep us away from our power is to shrink our energetic fields and to keep us feeling small and playing small. This is also what keeps the toxic ecosystem of grind culture and toxic productivity going as well. The false matrix is built upon a closed heart space which breeds lack and scarcity only wounded and traumatized beings would consent to such a system of energetic vampirism. But once we open our hearts to the power that we truly possess, then it's game over for the false matrix. If you found this recording useful, consider sharing this with somebody who might need to know this information. And if you are currently healing from a false twin flame, Remember to turn within and activate your sacred masculine and your sacred feminine because the sacred partnership really and truly starts from within. And always remember that you are the key. Until next time.
Bye.